All right, welcome everybody uh, to the PTO call out. Um, with me is, is uh, Emily Corey. She is a seventh grade Lang and Lit teacher, and she will also be kind of the um, part of the PTO as a teacher part. And so all the teachers will join the PTO at some point in the year, usually beginning of the year, but um, we also, uh, Ms. Corey will be our uh, teacher representative and kind of connection and bridge to what the um, teachers can go to one direct person. So they, if they don't know the parents who are in charge, um, sometimes that helps. And so we kind of have a go between when we have our leadership meetings and um, any different meetings here. Do you want to talk quickly about like the call out timeline? Um, as many, many of you know, because you had emailed me earlier in the year, we wanted to do a PTO first semester, first call out, because when we redistricted two years ago, like all of our PTO representatives became eighth grade parents and they have been so wonderful to kind of bridge us over to this year. But every time we wanted to have a meeting and Ms. Corey and I sat down to have, you know, to plan a meeting, we switched into a different uh, method of instruction. And so we felt like, well, let's get people used to this. Uh, but we feel now that we're pretty consistent um, as to where we're at. So we feel good about being able to um, really bring out the rest of the year and then uh, really have a strong uh, PTO going into the year. Uh, it has, like I said, the last year we had, it was happened to have all eighth graders and they all, they all went to high school on us. And so, but like I said, we were fortunate enough to have the leadership from last year uh, kind of help us out this year. And so they've been working with um, Ms. Corey and, and I know a lot about what we do as well to kind of bring in the next crew of, of leadership, like, like, like a five of you. So mm -hmm. Emily, do you want to talk a little bit about what we do throughout the year? I know you met with um, Erica Collins and um, help me out here. Lori Pavlock. There you go. Lori <laughs> Pavlock. I love her too. And both her child, both their children are at North Central now. Yep. Um, well, so you're going to talk a little bit about what we uh, do the PTO and it's not like it's like it's not an onerous um, activity I think it's a uh, uh, something that we can um, that you can handle and it doesn't and we spread the wealth too and, and I know that um, communicating and things like that I'm able to do pretty quickly with Parent Square so take it away Miss Corey and we'll talk about the things we do here as PTO. Yeah, perfect. So as Mr. Pickcock mentioned, um, I am in seventh grade this year teaching Lang and Lit. I've been at West Lane for five years, um, but was in sixth grade before that. So I recognize some names of parents, but not everyone. Um, but yeah, so I also run um, a committee of staff at West Lane um, centered around staff culture. So this seems like a very natural bridge um, to kind of bring these two things together and so that I'm able to bounce back to my staff committee and, you know, run ideas by them and see what they're interested in. And then I'm able to come back to you guys and kind of report back as well. So I'm excited about that. Um, as far as a normal year, which this is not, um, but maybe in August, we'll get back to a little bit of normalcy. Um, one of the big things that happens in the fall is a fundraiser, um, and that's through an outside company. If you've been at Westlane before, your kiddo has probably brought home the packet. You may have even sold things, um, but if you're, you know, new to Westlane for whatever reason, um, it's a pretty basic fundraiser, lots of like cookie dough, wrapping paper, that type of thing, um, but an outside company helps us with that, and that's kind of where we get the bulk of our funds for then that current school year. Um, let's see, and then really throughout the year, fall, winter, you know, early spring, um, a lot of that is just any type of staff appreciation. So um, sometimes we'll do luncheons um, near breaks. There's a coffee cart that comes once a quarter, um, but it's really just more of that type of stuff. And then at the end of the year, May is kind of the big uh, month. Um, we do an eighth grade celebration, um, which is normally like some sort of dance or, um, you know, just event for the eighth graders, sending them off to ninth grade. Um, and then also teacher appreciation week is in May as well. So um, historically the PTO will do something every day that week. 
um, for staff. Again, could be as small as, you know, the coffee cart coming or a lunch or, um, you know, anything like that as well. So that's kind of the basic rundown. Um, but I would say just for the remainder of this year, as Mr. Pickcock mentioned, our number one goal is really just to build a good foundation back up um, with a PTO because we have lost so many parents due to their children just growing up and with COVID and our schedule's always changing. Um, we just really need that foundation of people. So that's really our number one goal um, for at least the next couple months. And then of course, when we get to May, um, hopefully, you know, we'll be able to at least put our thinking caps on um, for ideas with the eighth graders and for teachers as well. So. And I think too, part of the part of the thing that when we've had PTO meetings in the past, we've always had them in person. And I think being able to even in even in a quote unquote normal year, we'll be able to hybrid some of our meetings and actually record them. So teach, so sometimes if parents can't make them to meetings or we have parent nights, we're able to to have more people because this is actually I'm going to say this we've got nine parents here and that's bigger than some of the PTO meetings that we've had before. So. I think that shows that we have to reach out in different ways. Um, one of the things as well too, like as uh, as Emily mentioned, like those were the basic things that our PTO has done in the past, but we're also looking for new ideas. And um, and I'm gonna actually go back to, yeah. so new ideas, new, um, new plans, new, new whatever. I mean, whatever you guys think of, also that some of you have been in elementary, um, PTO before and so anything you want to bring in for us I know what we've done over the past couple of years is just kind of added things on each year when they tried things um, there's different fundraisers we can do too I know that we do with the uh, red apple fundraisers I know some of you are familiar with that like this year they're having a spring kickoff but it's all online and I'm wondering if that won't you know do better for um, in years to come and so I think that uh, as we do that we're looking at ways just not to just fundraising arms. So I don't want you to think that you have to fundraise for the school. A lot of the things that we have, we already do have, but it just adds on to um, what we do with, with the parents. Um, but like I said, though, some of the things like parent education nights, we could do those. I know that um, one of the ideas of doing parent webinars at least quarterly for each grade level, just to kind of talk about what's going on. Um, I think some of the things that we can do to increase parent involvement will be important. And I know that, um, like I see the names right here, like, I, like we'll reach out to you. Like, you know that we'll be hiring a um, assistant principal here very soon, like within the next month or two. So we'd like uh, parents to sit on those conversations, you know, parents sit in on those meetings, either with their students or, or separate of them, just to, add, you know, to, pro to project questions and kind of talk about what you want to see um, here at Westlane. So I think that Part of the um, part of the the thing we want to do here is not only to increase like do a PTO, but also increase the parent involvement in school, make sure they're um, we're understanding and maybe we hit topics that they want to hear about. Like, um, so I know the big thing is going to be cyber. You know, it's always it's always about technology. It's about what's on our phones. It's about what's on our computers and how our kids communicate. Um, I think even how to you know. Um, be able to help their students in a uh, to learn in a you know how we help with homework and how do we do homework help and what's um, kind of all the student things that we talk about but that's going to come from the, the this crew and I'm really excited about like being able to kind of build because um, all the time it always seems like they're like our PTOs just handed off which they've been great at that they've been phenomenal at all of that but now I think it's time to really kind of reach out and so if you know someone that wants to come or help and then, or if they just want to be part of the school or information, are you sure of that? And we want parent input too. I think that's something that I've been really um, happy about with our redistricting is that so many parents have either reached out or they've been so supportive of us and they've really trusted us during this, uh, during the non-pandemic and pandemic times. And I really appreciated that. But I think that the more leadership we have in our parents, it'll be helpful uh, throughout our community as well and we know we're more we're more community based now uh, we can say to a person that they are coming from you're a cooker creek parent or you're a fox hill parent or you're a uh, willow lake parent i mean we have the occasional kids that go to those schools that go other places and we have the occasional kids that come in um, from different spots but we're really happy to be able to say 
from a community base, we can talk and we know what your shared experiences are because we also talk to those principals and assistant principals at our feeder schools. So it's, it's really nice to be able to do that. And then again, share our vision of what we want to see as a PTO. So really it's an exciting time because you, you each here and the people that want to be part of PTO can really kind of write how parent involvement is here at West Lane and kind of uh, really be a force of a, like a parent council for us. I know that I see the people on here that have led parent council in the district before. And it's, and I mean, it's a very good informational piece, but really being um, in there and really, you know, having that here at West Lane too, like a parent information council, like we can meet more than just, you know, a couple times a year, we can meet quite often, just kind of say, hey, here's what's going on. And so I'm really looking forward to that, just to really have a strong um, parent influence here at West Lane. But you've all been super supportive. Let's just, let's, I do not want anyone to not think that. Like it has been a, a pleasure these last uh, five years that I've been principal, but these last two years, especially as we've gone to more community-based um, parent, they, so supportive. Um, and so like just kind in your words back to us over parent, like I get so many cool responses for parents where it's just so nice to hear the things that, hey, I really enjoy how this teacher is doing this. And I, I just really enjoy the things and we've been, I've been very blessed, I know, to have this group of parents as we've gone through the pandemic of being understanding and just being just a partner with us. So, Ms. Corey, yeah. you have anything to add? I mean, I know this is not like you want to share in the chat or you want to sh uh, share your form? Yes. So, um, I put together a little Google form. Let me put that link in the chat for you guys. Um, just getting your contact information and just a little more information about you. Um, so that way we have it all in one spot so that we know who to communicate with. Um, this is not, you know, a closed door committee by any means. You know, if you talk to other parents and they mention that they missed the meeting and still want to be a part of it, absolutely. Corey, you all of a sudden went mute on me. Oh, can you hear me now? Unless my speakers are bad, I can't hear you. Oh, no. I can hear you. I hear you too. Okay. Well, then maybe it's Mr. Pickcock. Can you hear me, Bill? Mm -mm. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> oh, okay. So Mr. Stover says they can hear you. So you keep talking I know. at my end. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, we can hear you. You can hear me? Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, if you guys can hear me, I guess that's really all that matters. <laughs> yeah. Um, Welcome to our life, guys. This is what we do all day, every day. Um, okay. yeah, so if you talk to parents, um, I know Bill's going to put out, you need permission to view the form. Oh my goodness. Hold on. How do I change that? Hmm. You know, one might be more savvy since they do this for a living. Let's see. This happens every time a, a teacher sends Google info. Well, darn it. How do we change that? You, just turn it, you have to turn it off of, uh, um, you need to collect MSD. You don't need to collect MSD people. I think you're uh, okay. part Steady. of that. Maybe. Oh, we're straight. Yep. 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 I'm so sorry. Okay. It happens, oh, listen, it happens every time like um, Mr. Stover is exactly <laughs> right. It happens when I share it out too. Uh, I am so sorry, guys. Okay, I just sent the link again, so you should have no issues now. Okay. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> um, yay! Okay, so yeah, that gives us just, again, a jumping off point with contact and information about you. Um, if you talk to other parents, you know, in your neighborhood or um, just wherever you are in your community, your kids, you know, friends, parents, whatever, um, and they mentioned that this is something that they're interested in. Totally um, something that we can put out on Parent Square so that we can get um, that information from them as well. So not a closed door uh, committee, but this is just an easy way for um, Bill and I to have this information. And we'll be able to utilize our Parent Square to communicate to parents for the PTO. So whatever the PTO secretary is or the communicator once you share with me the information needs to go out, we'll use that. Like I used to use the school messenger. It'll just end up being easier in the long run. And then I can also also make just a group of just PTO leaders. Um, so, so we can do all that. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, if you guys have questions or comments, uh, fire them away at us. We'll do our best to answer them. <laughs> we, we're, I'm learning at least. I know Bill's had a little more experience in education than I have, but I'm definitely still learning. So it's just a nice way I, of saying I'm much I'm older. Curious, how, how well, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah. I'm just curious because I think I vaguely remember the fundraising packet last year when Mary was in sixth grade. Um, I'm just curious, like, I mean, I guess I'm curious how well it's done and like what the feedback has been. Because I know at Fox Hill, we really got away from those like booklet of cookie dough and wrapping paper kind of fundraisers because people were just like, ugh. Um, and honestly, last year, I just remember getting the packet and being like, this is a lot of like, just being like ick and just like not even really wanting to look at it. So, but I mean, if that's something like the Westland community like is used to and has embraced, great. But I know like at Fox Hill, we, um, I mean, you know, we weren't a big fundraising school, but um, we tried a few different things and discovered a couple that worked pretty good. So I was just kind of curious, like- We just got one of those home yesterday from Fox Hill. The packet <laughs> thing? Well, it's the online school store where oh. beans and cookie dough and I, I did that. I went, ugh. Yeah, I, and obviously I don't have experience with the online version yet, but um, I mean, you know, this year is this year, but maybe it's something for the fall we can explore. But on the other hand, like I said, if that's something the Westland community traditionally like knows about, looks forward to, is down with, then, then that's cool, but... I know in, in my experience, like with Fox Hill, we were like, we, we were purposely trying to move away from that type of fundraiser. Actually, it's done very well over the last, like, I, we never dipped below, like, the, like, the $10,000 level, and we've always, like, received, like, it all goes to the PTO funding, and really, we've always had more than that, um, and really the drop-off date, and a lot of it's cookie dough, but a lot of it's just the you know, the wrapping paper cookie dough, things like that. Although we've had great success with the popcorn fundraisers um, with athletics. And so that might be something too that we look more on. I know we are going to do, I think in March, the virtual opening for that same red apple fundraiser. But for the most part though, that actually has done really well. I know the kids get in, enthused when he talks. Uh, I mean, I know there's a lot of incentives there for them, but um, it's done so far really well. But again, We've only used that because I think he's guaranteed us a certain amount of money each time. Um, and that's so good. that's kind of where we've been for that. Well, that's good. I'm glad it's been successful. And yeah, I didn't even think about too, since we're, I mean, obviously COVID came during Mary's sixth grade year. Now she's seventh grade. So it's like, but I also, you know, one difference is obviously you have other organizations within the school, like athletics fundraising. So right. that makes that difference. We did, um, at Fox Hill, we did Taylor's Bakery Popcorn we did it like just right before Christmas and that was really awesome. Yeah, that's the kind of thing we want to know about. Like, like for instance, uh, some, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Stover just mentioned trash bags. We've never sold trash bags here, but I think that would be an excellent, because everybody, I mean, every year they either, I've either had a high school um, choir, choir student come back and ask, or I've had a, a, a parent or kid who's like a, my brother's son, I've always bought the trash bags because everybody needs them at some point or another, but we've never sold those here. And so like, that's the kind of thing, like what could we sell to do this? Um, oh, and again, too, the big Apple, the red Apple fundraiser is one of those where we've been with them so long that they just guaranteed us in a set amount of money and it has sold pretty well. So we kind of stay with them, but I, I, I do want to next year though, and that's maybe something that I've got to look at or uh, uh, we look at as a committee, but the when and where we're fundraising at, um, and coinciding with we know music classes do that and when we were athletics do that and things like that um i know again this year was different because athletics fundraiser we've never really had to do before because we've always had really good gates and really good um concession but we did not have really good gates or really good concessions and we also lost out on the big our big fundraiser for athletics is also the roundup and we didn't have that this year either and so we were looking in different ways to fundraise with them, but I think we need to coordinate our fundraising efforts through like, maybe this is the group that does that, or we, you know, we bring in um, Ms. May, Ms. Martin, Mr. Nickerson, and then we ran our future athletic director and talk about when we should and should not fundraise and where, you know, we're not going to step over anybody. And um, 
So yeah, no, I'm definitely down with any ideas that we have that we can bring in. I'm totally down with on that um, to help raise funds, but also make it worthwhile to people to order. I mean, the cookie dough is really good, but the other stuff, it might be a bit, how do we say overpriced? I, you know, I don't know, but um, it's always sold well though. So that's been, a, that's been the thing that we've, I've always been impressed with when we had the delivery pickup, it takes a while and it really covers the gym floor. So Lola mentioned though, I'm curious with um, us doing this in the spring and the online ordering, um, if they'll offer direct delivery to people, that could be a nice game. I think they are. I think that's one thing they are doing this year that we're not going to have to like, you're all online ordering and then you're all delivering it for free, which they've done. And the, they've always offered that. Um, in fact, like in the past couple of years, we've actually, um, we used to go from having to hold the whole gym and cafeteria to now there's the gym because there has been that direct, um, that direct, uh, shipping from red apple, but but yeah, no, the, uh, yeah, like Lola said, the popcorn fundraiser, it was, it was good. Number one, it was good popcorn, yep. but I'm on uh, what Taylor's going to do too. And then it was, you know, Love it. it went really well. Mm -hmm. And we get half of that money. So if we sell something for 22, we automatically get 11. So it kind of, I, it worked out really well too. I, I, yeah. I was impressed with it. You know, I'd never heard them before, but then they kind of started it because again, we didn't have the revenue uh, coming in from, um, the athletics this year and so they tried it and, and it's been worked out really well and it's a i don't know if it's you set your own time frame up but it's quick it went from thursday until monday at five it's not dragging on for two weeks i just put the information in a text message i sent it out i'm done with it you i don't have to collect money and i think jay over the two times, probably sold twelve, fourteen hundred dollars, and I did nothing. When you've been selling Girl Scouts tra cookies, trash bags, wrapping paper, cookie dough, it's just nice to not touch or have to collect money. Yeah, but at Cricket Creek, they made probably fifteen thousand dollars. That was the biggest fundraiser was trash bags. Yeah. Um, wow. like okay. $11 roll, you maybe get $4, but I think it takes a lot of manpower. Um, maybe because of the volume the school sold, but you got that big truck, you've got to get it all in the gym, you've got to have parents there, um, to help people pick up the bags. That was back before COVID, but it was their best fundraiser, and then when other the um, elementary schools started selling. Um, they started losing, you know, some of probably your customers. But I still have people asking me about trash bags. Like, yeah. But we did have to um, watch the timing of the trash bags because uh, that is a huge <laughs> open require. Well, and that's the type of thing that's going to be so nice, like coming from a committee of people who are involved in the community in many different ways than. I am or than Bill is like that's the type of stuff that as we move forward especially into next year that we want um, we want you guys to tell us yeah I think definitely like Christina just brought up the parent education night I think um, you know coming you know doing a West Lane only versus like a parent council um, but I think that's an awesome thing and I think what Lola brought up too how it being such a very quick time the uh, popcorn yes. uh, people said that regard if you do a two week uh, window or a three day window, you're going to get the same amount of money and it's going to be the all purchased on that next to last day. So you're just might as well make it a quick turnaround. Um, especially for when you're selling just minor, like a, a, a limited thing like popcorn. And so it, we find that anyway. And, and actually too, when we would collect the money for the fundraiser, uh, the first day, it would be like a few people would hand it in, but all the money came in the last week. And then we extended a little bit because of that. And um, so, yeah, so I think, too, I think too, even setting up a calendar and really reaching out to the high school PTO and reaching out to uh, elementary PTOs and principals and saying, hey, what are you, 
you know, when are you doing a big fundraiser? We don't want to walk over you. We don't want to inundate parents with having to help sell. Um, I think that uh, um, that kind of, that, those kind of things need to be, we need to keep in mind. I think in that, and also too, to streamline that too, like say, hey, like, listen, athletics, you're doing one in October and then you can't do one in November because in the music department, you know, I think that gets to a point where I think then parents are like, we're constantly fundraising. We don't want them to feel like that either. So it's just like, you know, um, keeping that in mind and keeping in mind people's pocketbooks and things like that. Like we can't, you know, keep going to people and say, hey, buy some more popcorn or buy this or buy this. And so I think that's an, I, I think that's an ideal piece. And the um, education at Cricket Creek, we sold like two weeks into the school year. And it, I mean, it was when she was in kindergarten, I was like, oh my God, this is a whole bunch. She just got here. But once, you know, she got to first grade, I knew what was coming. I knew trash bags, you know, that second week of the school year. And I was ready to go. But for someone just kind of coming in, it seemed overwhelming. But once you get used to, but it's always in August. When I like that a lot. Yeah, and no, I did too. Going back to uh, Mr. Stover said, I would benefit from a Wesleyan 101 session. I, that's the type of stuff though, like we want to know, like what do you wish you would have known? What do you still want to know? Um, so that we can put those type of events together, you know, and, and mm -hmm. feedback on, you know, back to school nights and things like that like how helpful are they you know what do you want to see that type of stuff is definitely input even though you know you might not be joining us in august from now until august um, we would love that feedback as and i well. think too like being able to now meld what we've been doing in because i will say this as one who kind of like the back to school night we were in like the three of us, the, AP, the APs and myself were in a, a separate uh, Zoom, but we had so many parents coming up and saying we really liked this because they were able to watch the, the teacher. They were able then to um, ask them questions that they needed to go in or leave questions. But if we were doing that live and online, I think that would also be a very, like we need to like figure out now how we can reach the most number of parents. Cause I, I, I think that's cause I were talking to some parents and they were telling us like, Hey, I'm actually on my break being able to talk to you real quick. I have a question about this, which that never could have happened if they would have had to come all the way to Westland. So I think how invitational we are on all parents and how do they like, like, like when we switched how we did back to school night, at, like last year um, in sixth grade, like, like a lot of parents were like, I love this because it was like, it used to be you sit in a classroom for a small amount of periods uh, time and then you know you ask questions and like but then you're like I just want to meet the teacher and so last year we were so uh, tight on space and this year we would have been as well um, but I think that's kind of part of the 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 things we can do and now with and as those of you who follow us on Facebook the new um, wing being opening up we have more meeting space but we can still utilize the either or the hybrid model of allowing parents to come in and watch without having to actually come in and I think that's going to be helpful in long term. If you haven't been on Facebook, or you don't, you don't have to go. You don't have to join. Go on that and watch. I just look at the pictures. So uh, timeline of construction. That's a great question. I'm not, I love talking about this because it's so. It's just so invigorating to the school. It's like you're at a. You're like you go on a different place. So in two weeks, we begin the rollout. In fact, right two weeks from exactly right now, uh, movers will be at our building moving eighth grade boxes into the eighth grade upstairs. And then eighth graders will be um, in there the next day. Wednesday, two weeks from tomorrow, they'll be moving seventh graders and Mrs. Corey stuff into the bottom floor of seven, eight. And those students will be starting on that Thursday. Sixth graders then are moved the next day into the temporary spaces uh, evacuated from, not evacuated, but like people out of those spaces. And then um, in early March, they will start uh, demolishing part of the sixth grade. Like it, it'll only go up to a certain spot. They'll demolish that part. And then the, a lot of the front of the building you see will start to be knocked out to, because if you see that, if you've driven by Westland, there's a fence out front that goes at our opening. 
that's where the sixth grade is going out to. And so we have a really pod concept and, um, and that's kind of how like, so it's a circular hallway with four classrooms on one side of four on the other, and then two at the end. And so every hallway looks the same. And then once that's done, that will should be done. The sixth grade hallway should be done by next early November, possibly Thanksgiving break where we'll move out and or the sixth graders back in. And then we will start on the center of the building. So the media center, everything that's in that inner circle, media center, um, world language classes, probably lead the way, that will all be redone. And then once that's done, they will start to build out the music area because um, we have a lot of space in the back where there's a former wood shop. And so all of that, all of that is gonna be renovated into a band room. And then that'll, that will get, then give the orchestra and choir a whole bunch more space because then we kick out of the temporary space or the space right now, the band is out. We do hope everything's done by December of 2022. So originally it was gonna be done by this October, but because we were, um, the community was gracious with us and gave us a 2020 referendum, um, we will be, um, we will be, you know, we get the rest of the building done. It was really, we're gonna be done in, you know, this, uh, like I said, this fall, um, because of the work of, of a lot of you here uh, that supported us. And, I, and I'm talking especially to Ms. Fry, cause I know we, we were filling out a ton of uh, postcards on her, <laughs> her committee and uh i've been to her house several times to pick up postcards and, and stamps uh so uh the uh, but we passed it so now everything is to be re it's like we're gonna have a new school um and and so even the old even the uh old parts will be renovated uh, new gym floors on both um north and south gym um new bleachers in those areas, uh, new like basketball goals and, and backboards and painted um, fresh. Um, outside as well, the athletic facilities will be done. That'll be done more in the summertime. That You really won't notice that. Um, so uh, we're able to add, yeah, we're able, we had a lot of scope to our uh, referendum. Uh, originally we were gonna get a coat of paint and some carpet and it was really like, nice, new, you know, new HVAC and all that and new fire protections. But because of the, 2020, we were able to expand that out. And it's just, I mean, it's an exciting time. Every time you come, every time you go anywhere, it looks some, there's something else you haven't noticed. And so, especially when the kids are in, it'll be more real to them. Cause I did, like I said, I posted the pictures on Facebook and a lot of my former students were like, why wasn't this done when I was there? I'm like, well, I'm sorry, um, but it's being done now. So if you have a chance, you can look at some of those pictures. And the funny thing is too, we filmed a, a video, like a, um, it was like a, a, a uh, what it would look like as artist rendering and everything that has been finished so far, looks exactly like the artist rendering. And so that's kind of cool too. So yeah. And eventually too, once, once we're out of uh, COVID and all that, we'll do a open house once we're more, once we're more done. Um, and, and, and even we'll do some parent tours of the new space if they want to see it, but it can't do it until we're really into a, um, um, until we're into a, you know, a, a space that where we can actually have visitors. Um, the air quality, actually part of the new, um, everybody with the new, like the new, everybody's renovation, the first thing you ever see is HVAC system. So that the air quality is, that's, that's number one in every school that we ever started with, even when we started back in the planning process of 2016, uh, HVAC was first and that's across the board and then fire protection is second. And then we get into, um, so our air quality is, they even did the temporary classrooms. They, they did a, a major um, HVAC work in those temporary areas too. But. Thank you. Great to hear. I work in asthma programming. So that's so in fact, one actually of my too, <laughs> one, of the, one of the cool things in the new classrooms is there's a CO2 monitor. And so if uh, the um, CO2 levels go up to a level that like, and they just kick on the, they kick on a higher level of fans to exhaust the room. That's so. awesome. Are they doing anything about radon either? We, we do. I actually believe we have tests coming in for that. I don't believe because of the, the, the heat we have is different. So it's not as prevalent there. That's a way more boiler system than natural gas system. Good to know. Thank you. Welcome. I'm going to send this Google form link one more time in the chat if you didn't catch it um, for whatever reason. 
um, or if you're just joining us. Um, so please fill that out. My email is there. Um, I'll also type it in the chat. So when you think of things this week or, you know, anytime in the future, um, you can shoot me an email, um, but then I will be getting in contact with all of you and we'll push it out to Parent Square um, when we meet again. I would say maybe like, how, I don't know, may, maybe every other month um, was about what they were doing in the past. So that's maybe touch base again, like late March, early April. Um, once we have a once we have a group signed up, then we might have actually one. Maybe we could probably swing one in in that, that month, about a month from now. What is a month from now? The, the yeah, that's true. March. That's like maybe right before spring break ish time. Yeah, just to do that, just to kind of talk about like an organization meeting. Yeah, that would be great. So we'll we'll send this also out in Parent Square tomorrow. The video and the form, you guys can just ignore it. But I'm going to send out to anybody who missed it. I know there were at least two parents that emailed me that said they couldn't make it, and so we'll we will. Um, share it out with them. But I appreciate, like I said, I'm, I'm very happy with the attendance tonight yeah. for the leadership crew. That's awesome. So. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for being here. It is so exciting. I'm ready to get back to a little bit more normalcy around here. <laughs> that is true. And if you, like I said, get on that Facebook and, and, uh, and look at those pictures. You don't even have to just type in Wesley Middle School. I think we're an open group that you can come see, but the pictures are or really, I mean, I don't know, I, it's the way I got it. I got it, or the lighting, or the fact that they just waxed the floors. It's just like, it looks really pristine and really yes, it cool. Does. So. It looks like a school that you see, like, on a Disney Channel TV show. <laughs> like, that's what it feels like. Ooh, maybe that's a revenue stream. We'll start filming movies in there, too. There we go. We can offer it up, because that's how beautiful it is. <laughs> so I, can, I, can, I can star as the gruff but lovable principal. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, like I said, we're, we're recording this, but we'll see you later. Thank Appreciate you. you. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good night.